right. It is seven, seven o'clock. I'll call the meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. All rise, please, as we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to everyone. We have a full house. It's nice to see everyone here. Uh, we'll begin with public audience. Is there anyone who would like to address the Board of Selectmen? Yes, sir. Robert Kalishman, <coughs> Simsbury. Thank you for allowing me to address the, the uh, oh. time out. We are not. We didn't start the clock, don't we? I got it. Thank you. You're welcome. I apologize. Okay. Oh, no uh, thank you for allowing me to address the council. Joan, I brought along the target oh, so we can paste it on your back. So oh, I'm good. Not get thank you. I'm a move, I'm but I'm a moving I'm target. Certain <laughs> to, I'm certain after you address them, right, the knives will start to appear and reappear. <laughs> Uh, primarily, I, I wasn't coming tonight because I knew <laughs> I knew what was going to happen. I knew we were going to have it's going to be a dog and pony show, so I didn't bother. I wasn't going to come. But then we had we had a terrible situation, as John Glenn refers to it, the most shameful time he ever witnessed, he ever saw, and it's this. I want everybody to know the Commander-in-Chief of the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Air Force, Coast Guard is the President of the United States, Barack Obama. And the shameful thing to commit troops to Afghanistan and break my heart and all the veterans' hearts and then refuse to spend money to bury them after you send them to war? What kind of a man, what kind of a leader is this? And I'm not by myself. Every veteran in the, in the United <coughs> States, in the nation, is upset with them. And then he, to carry it further, the wound isn't deep enough for him. So the, to carry it further, what does he do? He closes the monument for the World War II veterans, right? If I want to go visit my uncles and cousins that gave their life for this country, I couldn't go. If I wanted to go down the road to the Korean War Monument to honor my friends and my comrades, who some of them are still there, wouldn't be able to do it. It was closed. If I wanted to go to the Vietnam Memorial, where I served with a lot of Marines that ended up going there, and that was the luck of the draw, I couldn't go down and look at the names and touch them and cry. Is this what we want? And you Democrats here, is this what we want in our country? A dictatorship? No, that's enough of that. And uh, I, I wasn't coming, but I just had to get that and point it out to you. The commander in chief of the armed forces, don't let anybody soft soap it is the Democratic President of the United States, Mr. Needham. If you could address the board. I will. Thank through you. you. Thank through you. the first yes. electman, Mr. If, Needham. If, if you could direct your comments. Now, in the uh, Friday, <laughs> October 11th edition of the Valley, Farmington Valley Press, I wrote a letter, and I'd like to read it to the audience and the audience out there. Elections aren't popularity contests. As the November election for Board of Selectmen and Finance draws near, issues and position papers should be the contributing factor to the election of or rejection of the candidates not popularity or membership in a club or political party. The interest 
and well-being of the town of Simsbury should be at the top of the candidate's agenda and priority. As the November election draws near, I find that letter writing in abundance are either members of the same political party and share the same agenda, the ideas of the candidates or, or candidates whom they have either proposed to the political party or have supported by a particular candidate in the past. This should have little to do, if any, with popularity and should be a litmus test as to what the position of the candidates are and what they will pr propose in the near future. It should be left to the citizens of Simsbury to, to guess. It should not be left to the citizens of Simsbury to guess or try to figure out what their positions are or will be regarding such important questions as taxes, public safety, free speech, public audience, numerous positions which the president candidates running for all the elected office on the town of Simsbury, including finance, zoning, and several members of the board of selectmen. There is one question that is very important in my opinion. The recent position taken regarding public audience, which has been played with by the first selectmen and the Board of Finance. Let it be noted that the Board of Selectmen at each and every meeting has their agenda addressing public audience, which from time to time has been either changed to facilitate special individuals or an option of the town attorney to change the prior priority or positions of the Board of Selectmen public audience. In the case of the Board of Finance, there is no public audience. Let, it, let me say it again. Case of the Finance, there is no public audience. At the Board of Finance public meetings, Mr. Hanault, he's the chairman, has indicated on more than one occasion that as long as he is chairman of the member of the Board of Finance, there will be no public audience. Sad. In my opinion, this is a secretive and selfish attitude and position for an official of the town of Simsbury to take. Let me at this time reiterate that Mr. Hanault and the candidate and present members of the Board of Finance in Simsbury tell us what position they will take on public audience at their public meetings of Board of Finance. Are we going to have public audience or are you going to let us vote for you and then tell us we don't have it? It is also incumbent that the candidate for public office take a position on bonding. The town's debt, debt which is approaching the possibility of being out of balance, it should be noted that a AAA bond rating says very little at best regarding budgets and financing. A very good example being the town of West Hartford, Madge Sufka, West Hartford, Connecticut, has a AAA bond rating, just like Simsbury, and cannot meet its budget each and every year. Fortunately, Simsbury can. Robert H. Kalishman, Simsbury, past candidate, Connecticut House of Representatives for Simsbury. Thank and you, Mr. Kalishman. You could thank sum you summarize. For addressing it, and I, I just like to, to, uh, to uh, more or less go over that the money thus far that, is, in my opinion, that has been wasted on campaign literature. And there it is. And this is democratic, not to mention the Republicans are doing the same thing. And, you know, it's not right. And, and tonight we have, a, we have two, rep, two extreme, we have the representative from the House, Mr. Hampton, and the senator from the Senate from the state of Connecticut. They're both here, right? And it's, I just have to say this. Okay. The senator from Connecticut, right, he's bought a saloon up in Collinsville. Why weren't we told that there was going to be a state grant coming down the pike, which was, a note, which was announced last week? He bought his, his property. Nobody ever knew the grant was coming. 
Did you know it? I didn't know it. And I'll close with that. Thank you. But that's an example of things that have to stop. Thank you, Mr. Thank Kelsey. you. Thank you. Yes. Young Pope, 26, <clears throat> We were shortly be going through another election cycle without a choice in the form of government we should expect from our leaders. First elector Mary Glassman is running on her accomplishments without any reference to the many failures in her leadership. Glassman has spent taxpayer money with charrettes that are in reality charades. All the charrettes will not change the mindset of the heart that in reducing their losses by demolishing the building, thereby reducing our grand list over $1.7 million dollars, and reducing their loss and uh, increasing the profits of their shareholders. All the meetings will not affect the decisions of their board of directors. The big why has been in the works for over three years and we are not any closer to a shovel in the ground than we were when the plans were submitted. First selector Mary Glassman did not divulge all the players that were involved and had to be satisfied for the Wagner property to be developed. Nothing was ever mentioned about Elliot Gersten owning two acres of land under the Ford dealership. Wagner has been paying the Gerstens rent for the use of the property for many years. First selector Mary Glassman has never had discussions about the big wide development, divulged the fact that attorney Elliot Gersten, a property owner on the Wagner property, is affiliated with Pullman and Comley, the same law firm where Andy Glassman, Mary Glassman's husband, is an attorney. It appears that First Selector Mary Glassman has a conflict in discussing this property. Why was this not divulged during the Big Y process? Now there is another issue to deter the development. It appears that the International Skating Center has to give approval for Big Y's use of the road, although the board, although the board of selectmen approved the easement without consulting the skating center. The skating center has a lease with the town for the use of the land and roads encompassing the center. It appears that this entire process was flawed by lack of leadership, by the boards and commissions, and finally by the first selectmen of staff. Since Big Y has <coughs> approval for the development of the land, they could land bank the property for 10 years without any of the property being developed. Another failure is Eno Farms affordable housing under the direction of the town through the Eno Trust for the Poor of Simsbury going into foreclosure with CIL walking away from a $3 million loan. There were continued allegations of fraud from the owners and embezzlement from the renters. This property is still in litigation. The community farm under the direction of the elite at the Walker School has not satisfied the <coughs> Attorney General's decision that this operation is inconsistent with the Eno Trust for the Poor of Simsbury. Under the direction of First Selectman Mary Glassman, the town is pursuing buying the Simsbury Airport through grants and taxpayer money for over two years when the final plan resulted in over $200,000 loss in operating expenses it purchased. The plans were finally withdrawn. Months were spent trying to get the Gersten Building in Terrafield to continue housing the post office. This too was a failure. We are now exploring an $8 million senior center that is not necessary in a price we can no longer sus sustain. Many of these issues were brought before the Board of Selectmen during Nancy Hasse's tenure on the board, and Hasse was silent. Now that Denise Merrill, Secretary of State, is having issues discussed in several Hartford current reports, there is a possibility that Merrill, Merrill will not run for re-election. Is First Selectman Mary Glassman interested in running for the office of Secretary of State if Merrill does not seek another term? Since First Selectman Mary Glassman, if elected, will be serving her final term, it is time that Simsbury residents demand professional management with a town manager. Simsbury needs professional management to alleviate the wasteful spending and long-range planning. We do not need a pseudo-town manager. We need an experienced town manager with education in public policy and a temperament conducive to interacting with the public. Simsbury residents deserve professional management to guide through a rocky financial future. Recently, the fire department was dispatched to town hall to aerate the fumes from the entry steps that were painted with a solvent with a noxious odor. As a result of the noxious odor, the finance department was asked to take an early lunch. The dispatches at the police department were removed from their cubicles and continued to dispatch all incoming and outgoing calls from other areas. All other employees remained in town hall and inhaled the noxious fumes. 
why wasn't the solvent tested prior to application on the town hall entry stairs? On Monday, September 23rd, First Selectman Mary Glassman, Director of Administrative Services, Tom Cook, and Director of and Deputy Director of Administrative Services, Sean Kimball, all attended a three-day ICMA conference in Boston, leaving the town hall administrative services unattended. First Selectman Mary Glassman, according to her email to me, attended the conference for one day. The taxpayers of Sidsbury paid for her staff to travel to the conference, pay a fee for attendance, pay for meals and hotel bills. Why was it necessary for all three employees to attend this conference? How much was the cost to the taxpayers? This conference was the same day as the Board of Selectmen meeting, which was canceled. Would a professional town manager allow the entire selectmen's office to attend a conference and leave town hall unattended? Both September Fest and Arts and Crafts were both conducted in glorious weather. September Fest was on the grass at Simsbury Meadows, and the Arts and Crafts show was on paved parking areas off Iron Horse Boulevard. The Arts and Crafts show was well attended, and many people attended with their children in strollers. People were walking around with their walkers and wheelchairs. All these people were able to negotiate the entire area without any impediments. This was not true at the grassy September Fest, where all these people were unable to negotiate the facility. All activities under the direction of Simsbury residents should be all-inclusive for the families with small children and the handicapped. Since there will not be any more activities of performing arts, when will all the financials be finalized and a final report be generated for the public to review? Why does it take so long to generate a profit and loss statement? I recently called the Board of Education to receive a final enrollment figures. On a rainy Sunday morning, Matt Curtis, superintendent of schools, called me to give me the numbers. He stated since it was rainy, he decided to go through his memos. Luckily, I can accept the call since I don't play tennis in the rain. The latest enrollment figures for the school were a decrease of 171 pupils. The present graduating class at the high school is 400 students, and the kindergarten enrollment is 231. Presently, the pu per pupil expenditure is $13,560. As we plan for the future, these figures should relate to a decrease in the Board of Education expenditures. It is very ironical that there is a banner across Iron Horse Boulevard stating <coughs> keeping Simsbury informed when the recent special 7 a.m. meeting of the Board of Selectmen on October 3rd that discussed substantive information was not distributed to the people on the email list and the media. How can we be be informed when the meeting email list is not distributed so people can attend the meeting. It is time to take politics out of Simsbury's budget and start to initiate dialogue on having professional management for Simsbury. Since this issue has been discussed for years, what is the position of each member of this board regarding having a town manager for Simsbury? In a show of hands, how many board members are interested in giving the residents a choice for the management of Simsbury. Anybody raise your hand? No, thank you. We're not going to, we're, we're not having dialogue. We're just listening. We're, it, you're going to talk when you put your hand up. If you could summarize it, I'm giving <laughs> you more comments, than five I'm minutes. Finished. All of my, I just wanted to show up. I understand. All of my comments will be posted on simsbury.com and Simsbury Patch. And thank you for listening. Anyone else? Yeah. Uh, I can go first. Okay. Everyone's so polite. <coughs> we just need your name and address for the record. Robert Wise. Thank you. Three Vincent Drive, Simsbury. I would like to, Sean, let me give you these and you can pass them down the aisle there. <coughs> I lost a leg a short, or not a short time, some time ago, so it's awful to have arthritis in the other leg and nothing on the other side, so it's would difficult you, to get around, but that's Would you be more life. comfortable sitting? You can oh, certainly. No, it's difficult to get up, that's the real problem. Um, I'm here for one specific reason, more worth remember, this happened six and a half years ago, if you'll recall. We had a meeting like this, and uh, they 
The issue of the day at that time was Robert D. Crescenzo. I was very much, having had experience with him, I pointed out the difficulty that there might be forthcoming. And from my point of view, that's exactly what has happened. We've gone through now since 2003, roughly 10 years of his involvement with this particular case that I'm involved in based on his failure to do things. And it has been a most difficult 10 and a half years. I just want to quickly run through with you. What happened was he, Tom Vincent was, was the uh, first selectman. Tom came up with the terms that he wanted in the agreement, a contract between Tom Vincent, or the sport of the uh, town of Simsbury and myself. Steve Crescenzo didn't like that, although he had written the, the contract and negotiated with it. Um, so after Tom submitted his terms, I accepted those terms, we went on our way, and a month later, De Crescenzo files a document that <coughs> contained an affidavit. And in the affidavit, he was basically saying he was free to do whatever he thought best. And one of the things he thought best was to deny the existence of this settlement agreement. Clearly in existence, clearly valid, but he went through 10 years of denial of the settlement agreement. Through all of his submittals on behalf of the town, he was basically submitting false material. This goes into that. Eight pages of what he did, false uh, authority, he would say, uh, you don't have to do this without any authority whatsoever. Uh, contamination of the judiciary, what he, he ended up doing after, by the way, I came to you people or to other board members um, four different times requesting for the dismissal of Di Crescenzo and you wouldn't do it. So each time that happened, it, things got a little bit worse. He went to, uh, meetings with judges, for instance, and said, he's got a serious problem with Simsbury at, uh, because of this guy, Robert Wise, he's putting in false material. He's got a, an invalid contract. It wasn't invalid at all. It was perfectly legitimate. He didn't uh, attack it legally as an invalid, but that was what he was saying. And furthermore, he said, that guy, Wise, he's only out for money. Uh, I think the first decision we had, uh, uh, the initial decision provided my remuneration at $6 an hour. At that time, that was basically the, the minimum wage. So it certainly wasn't my case of going out for money. So just running through this quickly, this document, false authority all the time, just n never giving any support for the positions he was taking. Uh, Judge Sheldon, he, uh, he, he mentioned that uh, he would go to these judges before they got the case, as he did with Judge Shelton, as it's written here, and tell them about the invalid contract he had with Simsbury. And of course, the judge would say, gee, you're from a top flight law firm. You've got to know what's going on. So they would take that position, as Judge uh, Shelton said. She said, and I must tell you, I've already determined that there is no valid enforcement contract in the town of Simsbury. Now, this is two weeks before he gets the case. Uh, and, of course, there had never been anybody, myself, from the other <coughs> side to state all that. Then he gets... If you could summarize, Mr. Weiss, because it's how much? almost five minutes, so you have a, about a minute to summarize. A minute? Okay. <coughs> then he gets into a relationship with Judge A. Susan Patton. It's written about, I please wish you would read all of it. It was an, an absolutely amazing thing. What you get down to here, after all the material that I've put together, is my simple request for you at this time, this week, to kindly end the relationship, certainly in this case, my case, with Robert De Crescenzo. Please do the, the ending of the relationship, and you can do it on the basis of the ending of his contract, of the retainer agreement, without getting into all of this disqualification uh, difficulty. 
just on the basis of the end of the retaining agreement, and if you have to redo that so as to put it down to today's date, please do it. But please end the relationship. That will be of help for you. If it's not done, you're the one that the people will look through. This is a statement that will go out to the public. And they're going to say, why in the world didn't you people do something and stop this guy six years ago, much less uh, on the, 20th or the 16th of October? So please stop him. The next thing you have to do is clearly he's walked off with money from the wonderful town of Simsbury. The estimate is over $500,000 in cost to the town as well as in compensation, total of that. A total of compensation. So it becomes important that you be in the position to look into that money. Okay? Thank you, Mr. Right. White. I just want to say again, thank you. Thank you. It's wonderful to be in a town that's down to the level and laying things clearly on the line. I've stated the truth for you. I please wish that you would act upon it. Thank you. We will review your, your information. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, yes. <clears throat> Stephen Arzik, 119 East, we talk straight. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk to you tonight was about land use. And um, if we had been able to get the company that went to Enfield, Proton, um, to come here, all the demographics of the people who work there would be people who would be living in this town. Ironically, it went to Enfield, and Hiram's comment at the Shrat when that <coughs> was brought up was the fact that, oh, well, that's you know they're just going to work in Enfield because that's where their workforce is. Well, that's not where their workforce is. They're going to be living in Simsbury and commuting to Enfield because that's the demographic that fits. So um, the Charette, in fact, provided too many opportunities to fill the building currently on the additional lot. And what's happened because of that is not only did they include their, the Charette property, but they included the, um, the, the building that exists now, they included other buildings that they added to it. So what's happened now is we're probably above the Route 10 quarter study because even though the Route 10 quarter study worked out for that piece, none of it has been allocated for the other pieces. So if they all develop, you're going to end up with a four-lane road. And because we haven't dealt with that, and it was, or I should say Hiram hasn't dealt with that, and allocated each piece with their percentage, then Route 10 becomes a four-lane road. So I think that when he said we're doing each piece separately, I think that that's ironic because when you're a really good planner, you look at everything as a whole. And then you work down from that, and that's how you figure out how you develop without getting a four-lane uh, four road. And um, I was on the computer the other day doing um, some research for something else having to do with my personal life. And um, the, I found Town of Woodbury Selectman's office, and apparently Hiram's on the board of selectmen there. Now, he wasn't at this meeting, but I wanted to read a couple of excerpts out of this. Old business, the minor town road open space parcel. Although the purchase of the property met with resistance from Hiram Peck and others, the purchase was approved by a majority vote at the town meeting on May 21st, 2012. Really? We have a town planner who votes against open space in his own town? Really? Okay. Second piece, new business, Woodbury Reservoir, declassified as a water site, is presently owned by United Water. The rumor is that Aquarian is going to buy the property. So far, there is no evidence that there is an active purchase going on. Part of the trolley bed tracks are on the reservoir property. With the permission of the first selectman, the OCAAHC will compose a letter to the owners to see if they would be amicable to have an easement for a trolley bed trail. The committee discussed developing criteria to locate, approach, promote, and purchase appropriate open space to in Woodbury. A motion was made by Joel Serrata that the committee proceed with a no-confidence vote against Hiram Peck. Really? On open space? Just to let you know. I'm sure there's more of this. I just didn't have time to look, and it was making me nauseous. Um, the second piece of this is I've been dealing with um, some rather serious issues this year. My mom passed away in June. And um, before she passed away, as she was lying there in hospice, I said, you're gonna, they're going to be really mad at you, Mom, because you're going to leave, and I'm going to get to go to more meetings, because now I don't have mm. to stay here all the time. 
So she, uh, you know, she passed away, and we were trying to do aging in place. And we were trying to work with the state, and I tried to get some help with that. And what has happened is it has turned into an absolute fiasco to the point where my mother's primary care doctor spent the entire day on the phone trying to unravel it because I have not had success getting people to help me unravel it. And I've had comments from elected officials such as, why don't you let this go? And you don't have a mortgage on your house. You don't have to deal with this. It's a very convoluted, complicated thing that happened. It shouldn't have been. Mm. And it is affecting me personally. And um, I've had a bad enough year with the fact that my mother passed away. And it doesn't help that I've been left hanging out to dry. And my doctor said to me, do you think there's political ramifications to you because of your involvement with the third party? So that's how my doctor feels. So just to let you guys know, people's personal lives, like the fact that drainage was allowed to be coming from the Ellsworth property because Mike Payne didn't think it mattered, and the fact that this is blowing up in my face is not up for political debate. If you guys want to debate with me anything having to do with land use or any other political issue, I'm more than happy to do that. But when my personal life becomes part of it, it's a problem, and it's very much affecting me badly. Well, thank you, and we're sorry for the loss of your mom, So, and um, we'll follow up with you uh, to see if the town can assist in some of the things that you just mentioned, so thank you. Anyone else who would like to address the board this time? Okay. Uh, we'll move right to uh, a few presentations we have this evening. We have uh, Senator Whitcoast and State Rep. Uh, Hampton here this evening. Welcome. Um, thanks for being here this evening to um, update us on uh, laws affecting the town and uh, future impact on um, federal government if we continue shut down um, and uh, certainly the legislation coming forward with the next legislative session so welcome well thank you we uh, we're glad to be here tonight and it's been a few months since we were here last and I think <coughs> the time I, I don't remember if the session had concluded or not but we explained to you then that the um, Newtown massacre really dominated the entire session until April and then we crammed a whole legislative session from April to the first week in June to do the people's business. So it was a really contracted uh, session. We're in recess now, we're adjourned, and we will be going back in in February, February 5th, 2014 to be exact. And now is the time for us to communicate with, with you leaders uh, to see if there's any issues that you believe you want us to address in the next legislative session. Uh, in the even number of years, individual leg legislators cannot uh, propose bills that come from the committee, however, um, uh, you know, they're, they're, the committee chairs are, are pretty good about raising issues that the individual legislators bring up as long as it has a nexus to uh, the budget. And that's kind of where I wanted to focus my comments on, and then I'll turn it over to uh, Representative Hampton. Uh, currently in the <coughs> state budget, we're projected with, to end the fiscal year with a $4 million surplus. Um, while that's a good sign, uh, we're kind of looking for the end of the year projected uh, deficit because our sales tax collections are weaker than we had originally thought and the aggressive initiatives that we took uh, in, the, in the budget uh, regarding Medicaid um, aren't, aren't coming to bear that we thought would be a, a reduction. Now, Mayor, you'd mentioned uh, federal government. I, I was watching the television tonight before I came over and they said that they think they've reached an agreement. The Senate was getting ready to vote. Uh, but how does that affect us here in Connecticut? And really, most of the monies that come here uh, and the forms of grants are, are, are from entitlement programs, so they're not really affected uh, by that. There are some uh, discretionary programs that are allowed to fund their programs to carry forward. So if you've voted on something uh, for a certain appropriation, that money is always available until you've exhausted all the money. And you might have seen in the, in the paper that the governor uh, had um, sent some state money to the Bridgeport Head Start program. So that is done on a case-by-case -case basis. There's a, a system set up so the governor's office is alerted if there's all of that money has been exhausted, then uh, his office will determine on a case-by-case -case basis whether there's state money to fund that. Uh, the difficulty lies, and hopefully tonight there, there is a vote and we, we don't uh, reach the debt limit and we don't have the government closed any longer, is uh, while Connecticut may front it, we don't know if we're going to get paid back for the money that we've upfronted. So that's kind of a precarious position that the state of Connecticut's put in. We understand that some of these services are 
vitally necessary and we want to help out, but we want to make sure that since it's really the federal money that should be paying for it, that the state is made whole. And lastly, um, the state originally, uh, recently sold $561 million in general obligation bonds. That's going to cost us $150 million in, in interest, and that's to help us with our cash flow. We're, ha we're having difficulties over the, the, this buy-in and budget. Um, and uh, November 25th, I serve on the Finance, Revenue, and Bonding Committee. We will be getting our report from the Appropriations Committee and Finance, Revenue, and Bonding Committee from OPM, the Office of Policy Management, and OFA, the Office of Fiscal Analysis, to give us a, a picture of what the 2016-2017 uh, budgets looking like the, the deficit and right now it's projected at 1.3 billion dollars. So we're We're optimistic as to uh, you know getting out in front of this uh, as soon as we can because if we make small changes now it, Those dollars add up and I, I know that an email Susan's asked us to be brief would be best So uh, I'll conclude my comments and I will turn it over to my good friend in the house uh, Representative Hampton. Thank you senator. You're very welcome. Great to be here tonight back in the chamber. I appreciate it. It was great to be with most of you yesterday at the uh, the fashion show, and clear, clearly I yield to fucking Sean Askin now, <laughs> as uh, you know, he was strutting his stuff, and you know, there's uh, there's a new guy in town, so I, uh, but it was great to be with all of you for that really great day to support uh, the Second Chance Shop. And i um, so pleased to be back here with Senator Whitgos. He's been a great mentor and, and friend, and he's uh, hazed me a little bit during the, uh, the session, but no, seriously, he's been a great, um, Resource and actually, we collaborated on uh, several initiatives, um, including efforts on behalf of those with uh, autism spectrum disorders and a disorder called PANDAS. And both of us want to thank Shannon Knoll for her advocacy um, at the Capitol um, as we push those uh, things forward for our, our children. It's, it's very important. Um, Shannon was a frequent uh, visitor to the Capitol, as is our first selectman. And uh, we worked on some handicap parking issues for the state because we continue um, to see that as a challenge in municipalities. We pride ourselves on our strong relationship with the town and our continued communications with you. And it's so important for us to update you on what's going on at the Capitol and uh, for you to update us on your needs as you move forward. For me, it was an overwhelming uh, but extremely gratifying experience of going into uh, uh, the legislature who knew that the events of December 24th excuse me, December 12th were going to happen. And as Kevin mentioned, um, the session was dominated with um, Sandy Hook legislation. And last time we went over the, um, the firearms part, but thankfully um, toward the end of the session, we did add components to that bill that addresses mental health, which is certainly something we are not going to stop um, addressing at the state capitol. And this uh, component, this add-on to the bill addresses early intervention, uh, prevention, uh, for all sorts of mental health issues that sadly are continuing to um, occur in our young people so that we are more prepared in the future um, so that we avert uh, tragedies. Um, so, but we did want to um, talk about the budget. Uh, it's continued difficult climate. Um, it was a tough budget year, but our priority was to maintain um, funding for Simsbury. Uh, one of your handouts is a, a summary of Simsbury's um, funding, which was made whole. Um, Kevin mentioned the shutdown. I think there's a there's a handout on the shutdown and its effects on Simsbury. Also, um, there is a uh, handout of a summary of there is so much legislation that comes before you. It's thousands and thousands of bills, um, everything from gene genetically modified foods to tanning beds um, to uh, to animal rights is in that summary. And if you have follow up questions on some of those measures, um, feel free to ask us. I was on the uh, Aging, Education, and Public Safety Subcommittee. I served with Kevin on the Public Safety Subcommittee. Obviously, we dealt with a lot of um, uh, issues related to firearms, but we did uh, do some great pieces of legislation to make our pools safer and our, our schools safer, um, which, is, uh, which, which is, a, is a good thing. We also, um, on the Aging uh, Committee, uh, addressed issues relative to aging in place. Um, I signed on to the bill uh, creating an Alzheimer's disease task force so that the state is better prepared uh, for the ravages of Alzheimer's diseases, disease as um, our population of elderly explodes. Um, on the Education Committee, we worked on issues to continuing the reforms put in place in 2012, such as mastery uh, test standards and academic achievement measures. Um, but it remains critical for us, as Kevin said, to support the economy and the creation of jobs. The, the state did invest in uh, 
Bioscience Innovations continues to invest in the Small Business Express program, which I know um, several Simsbury businesses have benefited from, as well as our investment in Yukon, which we think is a wise investment um, for economic development to stimulate, to stimulate growth. Um, lastly, I had the pleasure of serving on the Mork Commission, which stands for Municipal Opportunities and Regional Efficiency, serving with uh, Mary Glassman, certainly under her leadership, uh, regionalization has come um, full circle and, and now everyone is talking about it and doing it. We're looking at things like sharing our uh, nutmeg network, common school calendars, ways to save our state uh, monies in the long run and that commission continues its work um, this year um, even before the session starts. Kevin and I want to thank you for all, all of our collective efforts to stop MDC from diverting water from the Farmington River. We did win that battle. Um, but the war is not over because the state needs a water plan. And I've convened a summit on October 24th to gather all the, um, the stakeholders in one room to create a master plan for our state water, for our public safety, for our environment. Um, it's a small state. We do have the tools and resources necessary to avoid such events happening again, protecting the Farmington River and, and all of our water supplies. Um, just in closing, thank you for the opportunity to serve you. It's important that Kevin and I re maintain openness and transparency. Um, next week I'll be hosting a legislative update at the Senior Center, uh, 130 to 3. Um, also being glad to join the Town of Simsbury at the Veterans Forum. I think it's on the 23rd. And I think Kevin and I plan on some uh, joint office hours um, at his saloon. Um, <laughs> yeah, but no, we do uh, plan on being in Simsbury for some open hours uh, coming up soon and, and being as open and accessible to, um, to all of you. So we certainly entertain questions from you. Thank you. Thanks for being here and updating and being uh, available to us when we need uh, assistance. Uh, just some, some things to follow up with if, um, if the government shutdown does continue, a couple things that we may um, be looking for some guidance. Certainly on federal grants, uh, we have an open space acquisition of Ferris Farm pending. And one of the key um, conditions is for the town to receive, uh, for the Sims Land Trust to receive the federal funding in order to pay the town of Simsbury. So um, if, if the um, shutdown continues for much longer, we'll be looking for some assistance on that. Uh, the other item is FEMA. This is the time of year when Simsbury has traditionally uh, been hit hard with storms. And um, I'm not gonna say it, I'm not gonna say it, but um, we all know what we were doing um, Halloween the last few years. So um, just to know that the resources at the state level, level and FEMA resources are absolutely imperative when the town is facing a crisis. And so uh, we all have to be mindful as we go forward as well. And, um, and then just finally, some uh, transportation funding is key to us receiving the funds that we need to maintain our roads. And we uh, receive funding through the Capital Region Council of Governments uh, from the federal government. So that will uh, have a substantial impact on the town of Simsbury should that continue as well. So just wanted to put that on your radar. I know you would be helpful sure. as well. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Other questions? Um, just one more follow-up. Just uh, we uh, we did pass legislation. Thank you for your help um, on non-educational expenses to encourage towns to communicate um, on um, boards of ed disclosing non-educational expenses. Uh, at the board of finance meeting last night, we did talk about how that law will impact uh, the next budget cycle. So if there's any additional information uh, that you could share with us, it's a new law. Um, I don't think we really know what that means in terms of uh, the requirements of the Board of Education in Simsbury to disclose that information to the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance. Um, so any information on how that will work would be they're, helpful. They're trying to make sure it's a standardized <coughs> reporting. So um, the, the money's from the state and the federal government funnel down. They'll, they're not asking you to change how you do your accounting at the Board of Education, but they're going to make sure that your different small accounts will build up to one big account that right, no, will determine. <clears throat> and then from there, there'll be equal comparisons across. Yeah, I wasn't talking about the chart of accounts legislation. I was talking about the non-educational expense disclosures. So uh, uh, we'll, public we'll guide 13, that would be great. So then we could share that information. Yeah. Um, great, thank you. Thanks, okay. thanks, for, thanks for being here. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, our move on to our community farm of Simsbury. Uh, we have with us tonight Mark Nolan and Diana. Good from uh, Community Farm and Gifts of Love, and I don't know if you're going to tag team or Mark's going to take the lead. So welcome. So okay, there you go. 
Well, thank you. Um, thank you for all the good work that you've done to improve uh, the farm and uh, to bring it back to life and make it vibrant. And uh, we're happy to have you here tonight. Thank you. Good, good evening. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to tell you about the exciting work that's going on at the farm and the most recent development since I spoke with you in early July. I recently sent you a summary of those uh, actions that have taken place since then, and I believe you all have received a copy of that. After uh, months of discussion and planning with uh, guidance from attorneys as well as a consultant, the uh, details have been finalized for the merger between the Community Farm of Simsbury and Gifts of Love. Last week, the Gifts of Love Board of Directors approved that merger, and yesterday morning, the Board of Directors of the Community Farm did the same. They approved the merger as well. So we are very excited about this new entity that will emerge. Uh, there will be a, an umbrella organization, a parent organization that will be called Farm to Family that will operate as the, uh, as I said, umbrella and parent organization. The Community Farm of Simsbury will continue to exist as a DBA doing business as same name, Community Farm of Simsbury, same program, same personnel. Uh, we've worked hard to establish that identity and we want to hold on to it. We know that it's important for the community. Uh, the uh, Gifts of Love will continue to operate as the Gifts of Love as well. We believe that this merger will, will strengthen both organizations and will allow the farm to continue its important work and improve and expand upon the uh, work that we've done over the last several years. There will be a new board. I would like to take just a moment to introduce you to uh, those who are in attendance. Uh, Jeremy Gresham, who is not able to be here this evening, will chair the new board. He's the current chair of Gifts of Love. Jeremy's a uh, Simsbury resident. I think many of you know Jeremy. Stephen Dunn is here this evening. He will. He has been the chair of the Community Farm of Simsbury. He will be vice chair of the new board. Stephen's here this evening, along with Ron Lacandro. Ron has been an important member of the farm board as well, and he will be part of that new board of directors that will hold its first meeting on Monday, November 4th. I want to introduce you to Diana Good. Diana has been the executive director of, the of uh, Gifts of Love for <laughs> seven, seven years, and she will become the executive director of the Farm to Family and will serve as the executive director of both organizations. When I left uh, last time, there were two things that I wish that I had done. <laughs> And I want to take the opportunity to do that now. I wish that I had thanked Tom Roy. Tom was here, and I, I told Tom afterwards that I was sorry that I did not thank him for his help and, and his support, uh, along with Tom Cook and Mary Glassman and Sean Kimball and everybody in Simsbury. They have been, you have all been a great partner, a great support for the community farm. It's been greatly appreciated. You've made a huge difference in what we have been able to accomplish. And Tom Roy has been one of those instrumental people, so I want to thank Tom Roy. The other thing that I wish that I had done was to invite you all to come to the farm. I want to extend a standing invitation for you to come to the farm. Mary came out in uh, early summer and had a great visit toward the farm. She learned more about what we're doing on an everyday basis, our education program, our food security program, the food that we donate to food security, and the incubator farmer program to train new farmers. So I want to extend to you a standing invitation to come to visit the farm anytime at your convenience. I would love to show you around. Thank you. Thank you. What questions can I answer Great. for you? Well, thank you, Mark. I know you uh, signed up to be interim executive director, and uh, you've stayed longer than um, probably you thought you were going to, and uh, we're grateful to you uh, for all the hard work that you have uh, given to the farm. I know uh, it's been wonderful having you with your educational experience. I think it's brought an additional component to the farm that we didn't have previously, so thank you for that. Thank and you God very much. I enjoyed almost every minute of it. <laughs> So I know you're not lying. That's right. Um, and uh, we will absolutely arrange a tour. I'm sure the public would love to come with us on the tour and uh, uh, see the wonderful work that you're doing. And uh, Diana is not a stranger to Simsbury. We're very familiar with her good work. Um, actually, it's, it's really wonderful. You know, we're really 
love growing produce for Simsbury Social Services and Gifts of Love, so we're really excited about extending that. Thank you. We're excited to have you. And uh, I know that this is just a, a recent adoption and approval of the merger, so uh, the board will um, have a chance to vote on the lease of the new contract uh, with the new entity. So uh, we know council has a copy, town attorney has a copy of the draft documents, and now that you've inked them, uh, we can review them and have them back to the board for approval. So we appreciate your being here. Thank you for all your hard work, and uh, we know where to find you, Mark. So. You do. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, next item is a big announcement. Um, we have some familiar faces in the audience this evening, and uh, tonight we have a wonderful announcement that Simsbury uh, will be part of the Senior Job Bank, and uh, we're excited to announce that. And uh, here this evening is Mary Margaret Gigenti, who's uh, a volunteer and uh, also a Simsbury resident, and a familiar face, Dennis Crithers, the former principal at Simsbury High School, and it's great to have you back. So thank you for being here. And uh, Mary Margaret, I'll turn it over to you and Dennis. If you'd like to just explain uh, the program, you're welcome to uh, sure. take well, the microphone. Sure, we really hadn't planned on uh, you know, a big, um, big to-do. However, <laughs> we're happy to take the opportunity. Um, the Senior Job Bank, many of you may know, has operated, uh, operated in the town of West Hartford for many years. And it was a regional entity. Uh, it has. It died and it has been revived. And now we are putting another component of that in, and that will be the Senior Job Bank of Simsbury. And come on up, Dennis. And uh, Dennis and I are have signed on as town coordinators, meaning that we are going to be working with people um, to, to match um, employers with people who are looking for jobs. And for purposes of this job bank, what we are talking about is senior means over 50. It seems to, the number changes <laughs> every day, but. Uh, I got a couple years to go. I thought it <laughs> would be helpful if we clarified that. So we are going to be working collaboratively with uh, the senior center. We met with the commission, Mary and the, uh, the uh, representative from the commission on aging, the chair of the Commission on Aging, the Senior Center personnel, um, and we're uh, looking forward to working also with perhaps uh, the library to to get this going. So we will be uh, involved at the um, at the Senior Center. Uh, being there, we will interview people in Simsbury who want to work in Simsbury, uh, and anyone who is interested, who is over the age of 50 and is interested in the work of the Job Bank, can look things up online at sjbct.org, that's Senior Job Bank of Connecticut dot, dot org. But also, we're going to be talking about we are specifically here for the Job Bank of Simsbury. Dennis? Yeah, you, uh, you may be familiar with it. Uh, it's a really nifty concept, I think, of, of matching and having some kind of a clearinghouse for people who want to have work done. People over 50, sure, they can go to the Yellow Pages, they can check it out themselves, but this is a really a, a simpler way, a good way, an efficient way for them to have confidence that somebody has um, done some work on the people that are going to be referred to them. So uh, let's say someone wanted their gutters cleaned. Uh, and uh, they would contact the job bank. And the job bank would match up, hopefully in Simsbury. It didn't have to be in Simsbury. Mm -hmm. But the idea is to have more local people from Simsbury fill that need for someone who lives here. Um, give them, uh, hopefully, three names. And then that person would have the opportunity to interview those people and select the person. Uh, the service is free. The work isn't for free. <laughs> uh, the idea is for the seniors who want to keep working, either because they have a talent, they have a gift, they have something they want to contribute, they want to do something worthwhile. Some of them you know, need the extra money or whatever. But the idea is to match up those people who need some work with the service providers. Um, and uh, there's been a, there's about 100 and but about, excuse me, over 300, excuse me, service providers already in the list. And I, I just found out today that two more two service Simsbury. providers from Simsbury signed up today. So yeah. already <laughs> it's underway. Yeah. 
And, and we should mention, too, that, <clears throat> yes, the service is free. However, we are doing due diligence. There will be a $20 fee that the person who is looking for the job will have to pay in order that, that a background check can be done so that when someone goes to provide services to an individual, they know that at least that has been done. So that $20 is really the only charge that the job bank uh, will, be, will be asking. Rosalie for volunteers too. We're volunteers, and other people can volunteer too to help this process. So, I mean, Mary and I are hoping to be able to coordinate this, but we're hoping that other people will will have fun assisting with it too. It's just been so many years since we've worked together. We needed to do it again. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a, and you still do, Dennis. Don't have any. Don't have any uh, <laughs> well, it's great to see you both. Thank you for volunteering. Thank you to the Job Bank for um, extending the program to Simsbury, particularly Ed LaMontagne and Sheena Nall, who uh, work behind the scenes as liaison for the board uh, to get this program up back in Simsbury. So it'll be run through the Simsbury um, Senior Center. So hopefully um, anyone who wants to sign up who's over 50, very young, yes, that's very <laughs> young. 50 is very young. So and uh, a letter from the yes. <laughs> but anyone who wants to sign up, it's a great program. And anyone who wants to use the program and hire Simsbury folks, it's a great match. So and, thank you. and we were so pleased last week when we had the opportunity to meet with Shannon and Ed and yourself. And it was and the senior center. Uh, the feeling has just been so positive. So we're looking forward to this being just a really dynamic kind of relationship. We're really and excited. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, I did. I just wanted to briefly say thank you for, for your work and thank you to Ed for, for your work on this as well. I think we have such a vibrant and robust um, senior community that this is good timing to implement such a program. So thank you and congratulations for all that you've done. We're happy. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully we've generated some more business for you tonight. Thanks. Excellent. <laughs> Um, this evening, we're fortunate to have a resident, Diana Lemkoff, who's here. And uh, Diana is here to uh, talk about a very important um, awareness campaign for, uh, for all of us. Um, it's very personal for Diana, and she's uh, kind enough to be with us here this evening. Um, she has an official proclamation that she's going to read for us. So thank you for being here, and thank you for bringing this to our attention. Thank you. Um, I need to, I need to give you my name. And all right. Uh, well, first of all, I want to thank you. I approached the town uh, last week about um, my involvement with uh, an organization, a local organization, um, in which we are fundraising for pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic cancer is currently the fourth uh, deadliest cancer in the United States. It's going to become the second one in a couple of years and it's growing as you know like breast cancer is going down or we have the protocols to deal with it colon cancer remember what it used to be it's the treatments are getting better there is no treatment for pancreatic cancer there is no cure i mean there is uh the survival rate is in the single digit it's about five, six percent, and those people, uh, and many people that survive, they, uh, you know, there is a mortality rate and there is a survival date within five years, they're dead. Mm -hmm. So that's also one of the reasons there is, there hasn't been enough fundraising. There are no survivors to, mm -hmm. you know, that have a voice. So thank you for the town to, for this proclamation, and then I'll tell you what we're going to do as Ron Foley, uh, the Ron Foley Foundation, um, this um, month of November. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, and the month of November has been assigned to be Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month in the United States, and I think it's globally in the whole world. And the proclamation says, I think, most of what I want to say. Whereas over 45,220 people will be diagnosed with pancreatic cancer this year in the United States, and over 38,460 will die from the disease. 
whereas pancreatic cancer is the deadliest cancer and the fourth leading cause of cancer death in the United States, and approximately 550 deaths will occur in Connecticut in 2013, and 76% of pancreatic cancer patients die within the first year of the diagnostic diagnosis, and 95% of pancreatic cancer patients die within the f first five years. And whereas there is no cure for pancreatic cancer, and there have been no significant improvements in early detection, treatment methods, or survival rates in the last 40 years, and whereas when symptoms of pancreatic cancer present themselves, it is usually too late for an optimistic prognosis, and 74% of pancreatic cancer patients die within the first year of their diagnosis, and I think it's repeating here, so I'll skip that. Whereas the federal govern government invests less money in pancreatic cancer research than it does in any other leading cancer killers, and whereas the good health and well-being of the residents of Connecticut are enhanced as a direct result of increased awareness about pancreatic cancer and research into early detection causes and effective treatment, and whereas the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, PANCAN, is the first and only national patient advocacy, organiz advocacy organization that serves the pancreatic cancer community in Connecticut and nationwide by focusing its efforts on public policy, research funding, patient services, and public awareness and education related to developing effective treatments and the cure for pancreatic cancer. Um, uh, now, therefore, let it be known that the town of Simsbury joins with the General Assembly of the State of Connecticut in designating the month of November 2013 as Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month in the State of Connecticut. Uh, now, when this, w we work with uh, very fast, and this was uh, a, a, a copy of a proclamation that the town issued two years ago, Sue told me. And now reading it word by word, you know, as I always tell my students, we don't read. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, first of all, we have another organization, which is the one I'm representing now, which is Wrong Run. And this organization has been uh, it started by Barbara Foley. Uh, there, she's the widow of Ron Foley who was the CEO of Travelers, and she started the organization in her backyard and with a raffle with friends, and last year we raised $250,000 at Folly Farm. So if next year you can do, we have a Kentucky Derby, wonderful fundraiser, it's a lot of fun, you can have juleps and, <laughs> and southern and green, fried green tomatoes and wear your hats and the men too, okay, or your black shirts, you know. Um, and most of the money, what it's nice for me also, you know, when I work for a large organization, you don't know exactly where the money goes. Here we're working with Hartford Hospital, we are working with our local oncologist, with Dr. Karasik, Dr. Robert Siegel. Hopefully you don't know their names. If you know their names, it's because you've had somebody being treated by them. Um, and um, most of the money goes for local educational programs for the medical profession because most internists don't know anything about pancreatic cancer. And they will treat you for many other things before they think about pancreatic cancer. Um, so we have organized several seminars on this issue and also next year there are going to be a couple more. 
and also for you know to educate the public on synodals. The, the thing that also we are asking in November, I try to be short. When I start, I don't know, I, I just, we'll give you a couple more minutes. <laughs> okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. you know, I hate it when people make it long. <laughs> so, uh, is uh, we are asking uh, stores, even you know, even your house, if you can, display <laughs> purple lights. Mm. The purple lights tell us it's pancreatic cancer, as you can see. Okay, I didn't have purple cancer there. Um, so you're going to see, we started this last year in West Hartford Center. It was fantastic because the center, they have a, a late night, Thursday nights, and what they did for us is have a, this is from last year, some of the stores gave a percentage of their sales to uh, Ron's Run. Some of the who has the the saloon? Oh, he left. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say, you see. Um, you know, some of the places had a purple cocktail. Um, and so I'm going to be asking the stores to do some, not, I mean, not really, we don't need, I mean, we don't need. They don't have to give us a percentage, but just make aware of this. Uh, hopefully you're going to find this for a donation in some of the stores and also shoelaces because we are running a zombie run. November 3rd, if you can walk, you want to be a zombie or a person. And Farmington uh, Reservoir, please come in support. And you can uh, go to our website, if anybody wants this, you can pick it up, and be anything you want. And this also benefits Ron's Run. And oh, just one part of, um, the monies we get also go to a rescue fund, Ron's Rescue Fund, that where we, um, with the help of the social workers at the Hartford Hospital, they determine people who are in need of financial aid while they're sick or their families, there is, you know, the breadwinner isn't there anymore or he's in treatment. But she's in treatment, so we are helping their families as well. Thank you, Diana. You are so, an excellent advocate, and uh, thank you for all your um, efforts in raising this awareness. Okay, right. so if anybody wants to volunteer, please give me a call in any... Absolutely. You know, we have your number. You, have, you know, exactly. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. We'll uh, move very quickly. Uh, I'll be brief. The uh, first selectman's report. The board of selectmen did have a uh, special meeting, and we did have a detailed uh, update on the Hartford. Uh, just for the public's uh, purposes tonight, uh, we do have the results of the Charette report of the final report by Gateway Planning on the town website. Um, we have distributed that report both to uh, the Hartford, who's thrilled with the recommendations. Uh, they're really pleased and find the information to be very helpful in terms of marketing the facility. Um, we did share that with the uh, real estate broker, C.B. Richard Ellis. Um, we did meet with the uh, state <clears throat> Department of Economic and Community Development and gave a copy to the commissioner and uh, to the deputies. Uh, we met with the uh, Simsbury Chamber of Commerce, distributed the report to that as well, um, and we'll be scheduling a special meeting of uh, gateway planning. Um, Mary, just I know you want to. Do I need to? Should uh, I recuse? I don't think you need to. I'm just giving an update on uh, the go. town's efforts. I think I don't think there's no action being required. So thank you for asking. Um, next steps, just uh, for the board and for the public, is that we'll have a special meeting uh, with the Simsbury uh, Land Use Planning Committee to determine next steps. The draft code changes are being uh, written and have been uh, shared with staff, and once they're prepared, uh, will be made available. Uh, the state of Connecticut is working with the town and certainly the property owner who owns the land, so that while the town is assisting in the sale, we are respectful that the land is privately owned. and. Uh, will take some time. We estimate uh, at this point two years for the Hartford to transition. So uh, this is a perfect time to plan for uh, next steps. We will be working with DECD to schedule a developer showcase tour. Uh, we'll also be working uh, with the Hartford to uh, 
coordinate a tour of the facility. Uh, the Harford will work with us on a transition time frame. Uh, we have worked with other partners. We've asked the chamber if they would like to play a role. Uh, we're also working with the real estate broker, the Connecticut Economic Resource Center, the Metro Harford Alliance, um, and other organizations to assist us as well. Um, we are also interested in um, other ideas, and the board um, did discuss at our special meeting an economic showcase, a forum, a local business ambassador program to uh, take advantage of some of our local developers to make those uh, personal contacts as well. So um, many <coughs> thanks everyone for their efforts in supporting the Hartford. A couple other quick updates. Um, the uh, town will be hosting an open house with the VFW post-1926 at Simsbury Public Library on October 23rd. Uh, we'll be um, having that open house from 5 to 7. It's really designed to highlight um, information to our veterans. Uh, we'll have representatives from the VFW, uh, state officials, uh, town officials, and also uh, congressional office uh, representatives as well to assist in um, new uh, programs that are available to our veterans. As has been required by the um, state of Connecticut, the town <clears throat> and each town throughout the state must designate a town uh, veteran liaison. Uh, Sean Kimball in our office has uh, been designated the new veterans contact. Uh, this was a result of the suggestion of our veterans representatives. They asked that um, the contact be someone who can assist veterans with jobs and job information rather than social service contacts. Uh, they felt that social service is a great resource, but um, felt that the veterans um, would rather be treated uh, through the Human Resource Department as a way to assist in jobs rather than through uh, social service needs. We, we thought that was a great idea, and uh, we're pleased that um, Sean has uh, volunteered to coordinate those efforts as well. Um, we also have um, now have established uh, notary services at the Simsbury Public Library. Uh, many thanks to our new director, Lisa Karim, who uh, took on uh, that initiative. We have a lot of need for free notary services, particularly uh, for our elderly, and um, those are often hard to find or expensive, and uh, thanks to the library for stepping up and offering this free program. A uh, reminder that the Junior Women's Club is sponsoring Luminary Night on December 1st. They asked that we uh, publicize this at our meeting this evening. Um, they'll be um, ho selling luminary kits uh, to be uh, lighting up the night on December 1st from 5 to 8. Um, you can buy a luminary kit from the Simsbury Junior Women's Club. They are also on the website, and uh, the kits, uh, the donations go to uh, benefit the Simsbury uh, Department of Social Services, the high school scholarship, and other community programs. So many thanks to uh, the Junior Women's Club for this information. And finally, um, town, it's um, not that we um, are anticipating any bad Halloween weather, but we've already scheduled a Halloween event on October 30th at the Simsbury Public Library. Um, our last event was very popular, and we wanted to offer a safe alternative to our children in Simsbury. So from 6 to 7.30 at the library on October 30th, uh, there'll be plenty of uh, scary treats and uh, free festivities for um, children. Uh, particular thanks to uh, Jerry Toner and Social Services and Library for uh, being proactive on the October weather and scheduling the event. Thank you. Now we'll move to our action items. Uh, we'll uh, start with um, our tax refunds. If, uh, right before you have uh, the submission from our tax collector, we have a total of $13,957.31 that has been reviewed and recommended for approval to the board of tax refunds. So did we approve? Second. <laughs> Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries me on the screen. Uh, next item is, again, a uh, recommendation from a resident in town who uh, made us aware of the Worldwide Fund for Nature's Earth Hour. Um, Simsbury will participate on Saturday, March 29th from 8.30 to 9.30 in a one-hour uh, shutting off your lights, and uh, we'll be shutting down uh, the town of Simsbury lights during that hour uh, within um, public safety uh, standards, of course. Um, and we'll ask our residents to uh, challenge uh, awareness by uh, shutting off your lights on that date as well. We'll be doing some publicity um, before the event, but wanted to um, get the board's approval to do this and uh, raise awareness of the event. And uh, there's no cost to participate, um, but we will um, 
make sure that we get this information out to our folks and many thanks uh, for uh, the folks who contacted us and asked us to support this cause. Question? Oh, motion? motion. I'll make the motion. We have a motion of uh, Lisa made it. Does oh. she anyone second? I will second it. And any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, next item, uh, not that we're storm conscious, uh, but if you recall <laughs> at the uh, last uh, few storms, I think there were five uh, in the last couple of years, uh, we, we were particularly concerned about the ability of uh, Terrafil side of the town to uh, weather emergency disaster, particularly since the, um, the town's emergency shelter is at the high school. Um, when the river is high, as we've seen in the past couple of years, it's impossible for folks to cross the river. And um, so we had started pursuing alternative uh, places and uh, shelters um, for the other side of the river. We applied for this hazard mitigation grant program. The town of Simsbury actually had put um, an emergency generator for Terrafield School in our budget. And um, we were thrilled to be notified that we received a grant of nearly $60,000. Uh, to purchase this generator for Terrafil School. So um, we need to accept this uh, the uh, grant. Um, we also hope that the sh generator will lead to um, Terrafil School being used as a shelter so folks who um, need to shelter in place and could, can't cross the river can um, be prepared for emergency <laughs> da disaster. <coughs> I want to thank Rich Sawiski for finding, this was a, a uh, not a lot of time to put this grant together. Um, it was uh, a quick turnaround time. It was uh, took a lot of work, and uh, we're just thrilled that we were able to uh, get the award. So, um, any questions? Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Do we have to read the resolution in the record? Um, For the feds. Uh, well, who made the motion? Warren did. Would you like to read the motion just for the record? Oh. Sorry, reason I brought it up. It's not very big, but if you're asking, yeah. writing notes that would be more appropriate to read. Sorry, you know what the feds in there. Resolve. <laughs> Resolve that Mary A. Glassman, who was the first selectman of the town of Simsbury, is empowered to execute and deliver in the name and on behalf of the town of Simsbury a notice of grant award for Terrafil School Emergency Shelter Generator with the State of Connecticut Department of Emergency Services and Public Protection and to affix the corporate seal. Thank you. Um, Kathy, do you remember who seconded that? Would you second that? I okay. absolutely okay. will. Great. <laughs> Any questions again? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. And again, congratulations to Rich Sawitsky for saving the town $60,000 um, that we would have spent because this was a very much needed um, purchase. Our next item is uh, another uh, wonderful donation of $3,000 from the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving. Uh, this money will be used for Cheese Day and uh, Simsbury Bread Day programs. Um, we, because of the economy, we are seeing an increase in folks who need our help, and uh, we're very grateful uh, to the Hartford Foundation for um, providing this generous support. I'll move that. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We will send a thank you on behalf of the board uh, to the Hartford Foundation. Uh, next item is another generous gift. This one comes from the Archdiocese of Hartford and the Archbishop's Annual Appeal. Um, we have received these funds in the past, and we're very grateful as every time we do receive them. Um, these, these funds will help go to um, both the Simsbury Food Closet and the Keep Simsbury Warm program, um, which assists folks during the winter months uh, to help keep the heat on and uh, helps pay uh, bills during difficult financial times. So um, with this, I'd ask for your acceptance, and we will send a thank you on behalf of the entire board uh, to the Archdiocese. I will make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Aye. That brings us to the next item, which is acceptance of Dorset Crossing as public road and a status update of Northeast Utility Substation and Dorset Crossing Project. Um, this item is back before us. Uh, if you recall, um, and Town Attorney Bob DiCrescenzo is here. Uh, the board authorized the town to go forward. If you recall, um, the town of Simsbury in uh, developing the north site and says so the result of our Route 10 corridor study um, found that the traffic flow made much more sense if 
a um, road was put in in a certain place that could be shared by the parcel. Um, when we uh, mentioned this to the owner of the property, who was happy to hear that we had plans for his development, um, he said, what? And uh, worked with us, uh, and we're very appreciative to um, make sure that um, we did the necessary legal documents to um, protect the property owner and to accomplish what the town of Century wanted. Um, we also, at that time, were working with Northeast Utilities and um, were very happy and proud of the efforts that Northeast Utilities brought forward um, to improve reliability by putting in a uh, additional reliability in a substation at, at the site. Um, as a result of all of those efforts, um, Northeast Utilities uh, will have, um, when, when it's done by the end of this year, will have improved reliability substantially. Uh, they've made about seven to ten million dollars of improvements in the north end. Um, they'll be generating 175,000 to 180,000 in additional tax revenue to the town. Dorset Crossing um, has also uh, opened its urgent care center and, as you know, um, has additional plans for additional development. So that being said, as a result of everyone's efforts, um, there'll be uh, tremendous uh, improvements to the area. Transmission reliability will be better for the residents. We'll be bringing in additional tax revenue, and uh, the town accomplished what we set out to accomplish, and that is to have a good traffic flow um, in the North End. So it's back before you tonight uh, because the final documents are in place for us to finally approve. And I've asked Bob DiCrescenzo to be here because we've all received a number of maps and um, legal descriptions. And thank you, Bob, for being here this, tonight to um, walk us through the approval. I also wanted to thank uh, Tony Giorgio, who's here from um, Dorset Crossing as well, and um, <clears throat> Northeast Utilities. And uh, Dave Coleman is here from Northeast Utilities. Uh, thank you for your patience in working with us. And uh, we're really grateful uh, to both of you for um, all your efforts. Bob, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, this map is, I think, familiar to all of you now. I think you each have a... <laughs> we could probably yeah. draw it. Right. Smaller, exactly. smaller copy. Just a brief overview. The Bob, four just so the public can see, maybe we could put it up on the board behind oh, you. Oh, sure. So yeah. uh, the camera maybe can, can reference what you're referring to. Thank you. <clears throat> If you had drawn it, it'd probably been a lot cheaper. <laughs> um, does this work? Yes. I'll use it anyway. <laughs> this rectangle is the four acre piece of land that the town owns that's encumbered by uh, uh, two documents. The first is the easement to CLNP to uh, build and maintain and operate their, their station there, and it covers all four acres. The second restriction is a, a reverter on the land that was put in place when the DOT sold it to town in 1973, which states that it can only be used for municipal purposes. So the combination of those two restrictions severely restricted any use the town could put to this four acres of land. But then two things happened. Dorset Crossing subdivision was approved, and at the town's request, this subdivision road was relocated to this configuration. Secondly, CLNP uh, had a plan to uh, increase the size and capability of its station. And originally they were gonna do it in this direction on the land that they already had the easement over. But in working cooperatively with Dorset Crossing and the town, it was agreed that Dorset Crossing would convey this area, which is called area three, which is kind of a Z-shaped piece of land. <clears throat> and then pending release of the reverter from the DOT, the town would uh, convey area one the seal and peak because that's where the station is and there's really no need to own it if it's going to remain the station and then retain area 2a for the public road which if you uh, act favorably tonight you will accept that road tonight and then convey areas 2b and 2c uh, 
to Dorset for purposes of development of their subdivision. I have laid out in my letter both the actions that have been taken since last we met on this in April, last time you met on this in April, and what needs to happen tonight, the next steps. And what's happened is the DOT has provided a release of the reverter, as laid out in my letter. CLNP has provided uh, $160,000 to acquire Area 1 and for use in uh, paying DOT for the release of the reverter. So there'll be zero dollars from the town to accomplish any of this. Dorset Crossing Drive and Castor Brook Crossing have been completed. The Planning Commission and the Town Engineer have approved the acceptance of those two roads, and CLNP is nearly complete with the improvements to their station. So the next step, as outlined in page two of my letter, is for the town to take final action to convey Area 1 to CLNP according to the meets and bounds description I attached to convey areas 2B and 2C to Dorset according to the property descriptions attached. Um, approve, uh, a third, approve the modified CLMP easement because right now the easement covers the entire four acres of land so they have to modify that to allow for the road and the development of the two Dorset parcels. <clears throat> and authorize the first selectman to execute all the conveyance documents once our office approves their form. Um, if you act favorably tonight, it's our hope that we will complete this transaction next week. And you'll never have to see this map again. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I've provided a resolution which captures all this because whenever you're conveying land and modifying easements, it's really great to have a clear chain of title that shows that the Board of Selectmen as a legislative body approved specifically these parcels of land for the conveyance. That's why we've provided the resolution to help you um, to do that if you so choose and have the minutes clearly reflect exactly what land we're talking about and where it is and, and reference the subdivision map. Thank you, Bob. Thank you for um, all your help in um, accomplishing this. I think this uh, Initially, the town um, felt that the road should go in that location and had hoped that the DOT would just give permission um, yeah. to enable us to do that. But when that wasn't possible, um, there was a lot of talk about how that could be done. Right. And um, right. many thanks to both um, Dorset Crossing, Tony Giorgio, and Northeast Utilities through Dave's efforts in um, accomplishing the town's, what, what is the best plan? It's a win-win for the town, the developer, and Northeast Utilities because it accomplishes everything. Uh, without a lot of curb cuts, without a lot of right. um, coverage issues, without a lot of pavement, and it makes for a better plan. So. Yeah, and it's a good-looking road. I recently had occasion to drive out and you know drive on it, and it it lays out beautifully, and it's it's a win for everybody. It really was a team effort, and I would put DOT on that list too. They yes. they delayed a bit, but they were constrained by their own reg rules and regulations. Nothing they could do about that. They had to appraise it. The appraiser came in at what it did. And, you know, they were cooperative all along the way. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Questions for the board? No questions? Okay. I think we've had this before us. We've had a lot of times. times. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is number four. Um, for anybody who's counting, you know. Yes. Yeah, but not, I think it's important because it is, it is complicated. We want to make sure that, that the public's comfortable. We want to make sure that right. the board is comfortable. Right. Bob's been kind enough to come back several times to walk yeah. us through. So we've had Apple opportunity for folks to comment. So yeah, and it's really I don't think it was necessary that we had it on and so everybody felt no, comfortable. No. It's really important when we're conveying land to be exactly sure what we're conveying and have you all comfortable with that. So that's why it's back before you tonight and for the acceptance of the roads, which is required. Great. Now, with the acceptance of the road, I'm told that the next development will begin shortly. Uh, for the MS housing, what I call the MS housing, I'm not sure that's what it's called, but so they'll be in the ground very shortly once the road is accepted and they have access to their their parcel. So. Great. Okay. Um, Just to note before that, yes. uh, Moira was good enough to catch a date uh, correction in the right. resolution, <clears throat> the second to last whereas clause in the first page. Should be October 14, not October 15. And it should be 2013, not 2103. Right. Other than that, it was okay. Yeah. Well, I don't think anybody has any objection to waiting until 2103. Rich has been a long-standing town employee, but I'm not sure he'll be here in 2103. Sorry about that. No problem. Um, with that said, I. I 
I don't believe we need to read the resolution I Bob if we reference the resolution would that be acceptable yeah if you just reference it and the date and then uh, someone waves the reading and incorporate it into the minutes I think that'll be fine with the changes that with the ch two changes yes. yes do we have a motion to I'll make that motion okay so and just the reading of the resolution incorporated into the minutes and that the uh, resolution does uh, contain the date change in the second whereas to October, the, the subject of five conditions articulated in the October 14th, 2013 letter attached. Great. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Oh, wait. Wait. You're opposed? No, I'm not opposed at all, but there's another change on the next page. Well, it would be. Um, all, all 15ths are changed to. October 15th, does that also need to be changed to October yes. 14th? Yes. yes, it should, yes. So just a clarification on um, the motion with the two date changes and, and the second, the second uh, referenced amended as well. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. And uh, Dave, not that we're thinking about bad weather, but when do you anticipate that the substation will be ready to go? When do you anticipate the substation will be ready to go? It'll be ready to go by the end of this year. We still have some minor activities that will extend into next year, like landscaping and such. Great. We're excited. Thank you very much Great. for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You'll be back before us with uh, dates on next steps. You want an update? Absolutely. Yeah. You All have right. a moment? Can I give it to you now? Absolutely. Opinions of all. I know it's late and the Red Sox are probably winning, but yeah. <laughs> hopefully you all. Anyone checked? I didn't want to be rude. <laughs> <laughs> I've been Should we pause meeting. for a moment? Three or four days, everybody's doing this. Yeah, in right. Any case, um, first of all, thank you for uh, your action this evening. Uh, it's been an interesting process, but it's one that I think both Bobby and Mary have, have indicated, and David and I would agree, it's been a tremendous amount of cooperation. And it hasn't been easy, it's been complex. And most of these things are, but we're appreciative of all the effort and we finally have crossed over that particular road and we look forward to the next Friday. The Come on. It was about a year ago that many of you stood out in a bright October day at the ribbon cutting for Dorset Crossing. A lot of things have happened in a year. In fact, as we reflect upon years, we sometimes think of the things that have happened and some of the things we wish hadn't happened. But I had a, an amusing thing happen to me this afternoon. My daughter is a doctoral student in, in Massachusetts getting a clinical a degree in clinical psychology. And she called me and she said, Daddy, I just had a committee meeting. And you know what my chairman said to me? And I said, no, what did your chairman say to you? And she said, she told me that one year from today, my first three chapters in my dissertation are due. And I thought, wow, she's thinking out a year from now, and I'm trying to think about a year in the past and hoping that I get through another year. <laughs> but the year at Dorset Crossing has been great. St. Francis is now offering cardiological ser services, OBGYN, uh, laboratory services, mental health. The New England Urgent Care Center is open seven days a week, 365 days a year, 12 hours a day during the week, 10 hours a day during the weekend. We're 83% occupied in the first building. I have a proposal out for the last 2,000 square feet. Uh, as Bob alluded to, I expect that sometime in the next 10 days, the 48-unit MS housing, special needs housing, will break ground. Um, I know there's going to be some kind of a, a gala event for that, and I'm sure you'll all be invited to that, but um, they're going to start their site work any day now. Uh, Having the road accepted, it was critical because technically they couldn't get from where we were to where they were. So now that's, that's behind us and we should be able to do that. Um, the 168 market rate apartments are moving their way through the land use commissions in town. They hope to be able to break ground before the end of the year. So if you project out, a year from now, we could be talking about nearly 200 new apartments, 48 of whom are for special needs folks, the other 168 are for market rate. Um, I fully expect that a year from now, our second building will be underway. Uh, we are currently working with a number of, of uh, interested parties to expand the medical services. Uh, there's an obvious correlation between developing a rehab facility 
and the MS population and the number of folks within the Farmington Valley that have special needs for rehabilitative services. The Mandel Center at Mount Sinai Hospital is a major facility, a regional facility, and they're very interested in perhaps taking a third of the new building, which will be, which is all I need, frankly, to start building it. So we're, um, we're very excited about it. it I'm not going to delude you into thinking that the real estate industry is robust. It's not robust. It's still very, very, very fragile. What's going on in Washington and in Connecticut doesn't help, uh, but we all put our shoes and socks on every day and we go to work and we see what we can make happen. Uh, we've got a lot of interest in the site. Uh, I do expect that in the course of this year, once the final approval for these 168 apartments is in place, that we will see the development of some new retail up there, retail that's been missing. Um, we've been told by potential retailers that once they know the apartments are a go, they see that as an anchor and therefore we'll be able to bring some more activity out there. I'm excited about what the North Village is doing in terms of trying to create an image for themselves. Uh, it's fun to be part of that. So I just wanted to tell you that it's been a good year. We expect this next year to be better. And on behalf of my partner, Carl Kropik, and myself, I want to thank you, all of you, for your support, Bobby, for your hard work, and for the land use commissioners who continue to support what we're trying to do. I don't like to say it, but it is fun to be able to increase the tax rolls. Yes, it is. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. And appreciate the update and uh, look forward to uh, all your good work. And again, uh, Dave, please communicate to Northeast Utilities. We'll send a letter as well how uh, appreciative we are of the reliability and certainly the cooperation in this instance as well. So thank you. Thanks, Bob. Uh, moving right along, we'll move to the approval of the uh, town property for the purpose of the Dave Vital Memorial 5K race, Sunday, October 27th. Um, this is uh, pending uh, Performing Arts Center board approval. So this uh, does have to go through them, but this is, I think, the fifth year that uh, the race will be held in memory of a, an officer, young officer that we lost. Um, and uh, we are grateful that the department continues to honor his memory and uh, holds this race. So um, it's really a formality. It's uh, done every year, and um, it will go through the regular permit process and also uh, Performing Arts Board. So can I have a motion to approve? I'll make that. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, next item is approval of the Performing Arts Center financials. Uh, we do have a copy of the town's um, <coughs> documentation that uh, has not yet gone to the Performing Arts Board. Uh, Ferg Jansen's here this evening from the Performing Arts Center, so thank you, Ferg, for your patience and being here. Um, I think, you know, in order to have a full discussion, uh, I think it would be important for us to first allow the Performing Arts Board to take a look at uh, the documents and to verify uh, the, the, um, the numbers. I think that uh, there's some certainly some themes here. Um, we, as we would imagine, the uh, Harry Connick concert and Emmylou Harris concert uh, did show a positive revenue. I think uh, the Talcott Mountain Music Festival, because of the cost, uh, doesn't show a positive revenue. Um, there were some uh, successes in September Fest that also generated um, some revenue as well. Um, but I think there are certainly a lot of issues that um, the Performing Arts Board will need to look at, and um, certainly some concerns is, uh, you know, the timing of the financials. I, I think there was some concern on the board's part about trying to get these sooner, and uh, we know the challenges of that through, um, through using the town system as well. So uh, we'll let the Performing Arts Board go back and um, take a look at these before um, we can accept them. So I'm not asking for a motion tonight. We're not ready to, to review the numbers, but um, I did promise that this would be on the agenda and we did have the town's um, financials ready. So any questions on the report? Do we have to move to table that or is it safe? Um, I don't think we need no. to table it. We're okay. just not ready to take action. Okay. Um, but if anyone has any, it will be discussed and reviewed by the Performing Arts Board. So if you do have questions and concerns, I want to thank Sean. He's um, 
offered to coordinate some of the questions that, that we had and town staff had, so I know he'll bring back those questions as well. Um, Jerry has spent a lot of time with the numbers and has some um, suggestions for uh, the board about how we can improve the process going forward. And certainly the board um, has been on having ongoing discussions with the uh, 501c3 that has been incorporated, and so um, we don't have any recommendations to bring forward on that as well for the board. So I don't know, Sean, if you wanted to add anything. No, I, I, Mary, I think you're right. It was important for us to get some financials out there because obviously the, the taxpayers want to know uh, what's going on now. And the good news is even uh, even if these do get revised, it's yeah. still look like they lose broke even at this point, which was what we charged them to do. Um, so that's good. Um, and I anticipate if they're going to change, they're going to change towards the positive. Um, so I, I think uh, I think we should be in good shape there. Yeah, you know, it's it's as we talked about the volunteers down there. They kind of go 100 miles an hour and and get all the events done. And at the end of the day, when they're exhausted, they got to put the financials and stuff together. So we you know we're, we're still learning, um, still evolving the process. But uh, I look forward to perhaps either bringing your questions and comments to them or a joint meeting um, in November as we iron out a number of issues. Good suggestion, because um, I think that's a, a good suggestion. Um, as we finish up a contract, I think the town needs to decide what we're doing right. um, moving forward without wasting too much time and putting uh, the Performing Arts Board uh, behind. So I think right. that's an excellent suggestion, and we'll uh, look for you to coordinate that. Absolutely. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Next item is status of negotiations with the Hartford Symphony. Again, um, we don't have anything to uh, have the board vote on, but I do want to thank um, the Symphony and uh, Tom and uh, Bob Hensley for assisting in trying to get a contract to bring forward. Uh, the good news is, is that the symphony is very interested in coming back. If the uh, town and the symphony uh, renew the contract, we'll be celebrating the 20th year um, of anniversary of the symphony over the next two years. So um, it's hard to imagine that um, a tent in a cornfield um, turned out to be um, a long-term relationship with um, a wonderful orchestra. So um, I don't know, Tom. I know we don't have anything to vote on. We don't have any documents, but I know um, I don't want to. But we have. Uh, we, what you do have is the uh, terms that uh, have been. It, the last step is to is to revise the contract to include these terms. We're, we're basically uh, done. Uh, but I think uh, uh, a, a final review with town councils is appropriate before we vote. Uh, the. Uh, Several things uh, informed these negotiations. Uh, one was the uh, uh, the web report, uh, which, uh, as, as you all will probably recall, uh, put a premium on retaining the Hartford Symphony Orchestra as, as, a, as sort of the premier, the prime tenant for for the Performing Arts Center, and also on uh, changing the the nature of the uh, relationship to minimize. Uh, to reduce the size of the license fee, which you know, was which was something of a trick, uh, but I worked very closely with uh, Jerry Toner, with Bob Hensley, with Tom Vincent, with finance to take a look at numbers, and we think we've come up with uh, an approach which does lower the, the license fee, but includes inclu increases the amount that we get paid on for trip for tickets, and also changes the definition of ticket. You know, for years we've. <laughs> We, we've seen thousands of people down there, and it seems that we're only getting paid on the smaller number of tickets. The large number of sponsorship tickets were just not counted. They're now being counted, and they're being counted at $3.50 a ticket. Uh, we have a variety of vehicles for increasing our revenues, so that's the, uh, that they've agreed to. That's looking positive. Uh, they've agreed to let us do our own fundraising for the venue, for, for, the, uh, uh, for the location, for the venue. And finally, uh, we've uh, in, in terms of reducing costs, uh, we've, we, are, we are no longer obligated to uh, provide fireworks. Now the goal is, of course, going to be to try to find a sponsor to do it. It's, everyone likes fire, fireworks. It's like, you know, it's like having an elephant. People will come to see the elephant. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good thing to have, uh, but it's important for us to uh, start to minimize our, our, our financial exposure on this by getting rid of fixed costs like that. Uh, I know that uh, uh, Sean can speak to this as well, uh, that the, the boards are looking very hard at some of the other uh, fixed costs that might be eliminated through some fundraising on their part, uh, theirs, or, or through a, or perhaps a capital effort with the town. Uh, but with, with a few 
there's some low hanging fruit here, and as, as we'll go through later, there will be uh, there are opportunities to take out some fixed costs that would make this a much more uh, a commercially viable venue for everybody involved. So you have have the summary of terms. I will work with town council on finalizing them, and we'll have a contractor present to you. Okay, question. Uh, just, I haven't looked at the website in a, in a while. I just want to confirm that the web report is still up. For the public to look at. You know, I don't know that, but I will confirm that, that, of course. If it's not, they will make transition yeah, time, it's, I think it's important. It, it is, a, it, it, and it bears rereading. It was it very, very well done, so I will make sure it's online. Thank you. Um, so if anyone has any feedback on this, and also um, we'll ask the Performing Arts Board to take a look at the contract, too, and any input that they have would, uh, will incorporate. My, my only question, Tom, and I apologize for not getting asked it earlier, we were focused on the financials, was this $1,500 that we're going to pay the HSO for an outside concert. Is that because the HSO is going to take on additional costs associated with the equipment? That's correct. Okay. Right. Right. That, that makes sense. It is. There was, it was, uh, uh, yeah, and, but I must also say that it's also something of an emotional stum stumbling block for them. Uh, they, uh, the, the hardest part of this negotiation was tied up with the fact that they're there for five weeks. We run things for five weeks because that's the cheapest way to do it. And then all of a sudden there are two promoters there using a lot of the same materials. And the symphony doesn't feel like it's getting any credit for for that. Uh, so, uh, so the understanding was that uh, we would we would address that, and, and there are additional costs in terms yeah. of, of of moving their uh, materials and around. That's um, a payment that we could pass along to whoever outside concert comes in as well, because they will be using. It's really a rental fee, exactly. right? Which would be exactly. passed along. So through the town. Yeah. You know, yeah. We're, we're lowering their licensing fee, which in theory is giving up some of the exclusivity, exclusivity that they've enjoyed. Right. So again, uh, it's, that's right. There's a balancing of interests on that. Uh, this is also this will also be assignable uh, as part of that uh, uh, the joint meeting, right. which I think is a great idea. We probably want to try to figure out, uh, you know, obviously if and when the the new pack board will be able to uh, step into the breach on this. Absolutely. Thank you for your work on this, obviously. Yeah, thank Everybody you. We've been a long time negotiating this. This is great, especially to see a two-year deal. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's yeah, nice that did seem to make sense. Right. And uh, I think uh, uh, long, long enough to get us through a couple of seasons and some transitions, and yeah. short enough that if, uh, if it's horrible for somebody, it won't be re regretted. <laughs> I don't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're fine. Okay. Well, we, we do have really quite an upside in this if things work well. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Tom. Uh, we'll move on. Um, just to remind folks, the Halloween event is October 30th. Uh, next item is appointment of veterans liaison. Uh, we'll be working with um, the veterans groups. They would like to have a liaison to the um, Aging and Disability Commission. It didn't list this here. Um, we've asked if uh, they would like um, a individual or would like to have a representative, and so we're waiting to see how that would work. They want to be part of the aging and disability conversation because a lot of the programs um, that the Aging and Disability Commission does, and, and Ed does a great job, and his folks is um, can be used to get out to the veterans community. Mm -hmm. So they want to be plugged into that process. So uh, we don't have anybody uh, specific who's going to be the liaison to the um, aging disabilities, but we do um, encourage and um, have been having a veteran attend a representative. So um, I don't think we need a formal process to appoint anyone, but just um, if the board's comfortable, we'll have an informal veterans liaison to the Aging and Disability Commission. If at some point they want to formalize that relationship and identify someone, it'll come back to the board um, for formal action. Okay. Um, next item is appointment and resignations. We have to appoint six new students with our thanks um, and the school resource officer, Todd Cushman, to the Youth Services Advisory Board. Um, and Nikki uh, LaForce Beck has recommended those appointments. So. Uh, can I have a motion to approve? I'll make that motion. Second. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next item is to approve the, uh, accept the resignation of Mr. Gardner, William Gardner from the Design Review Board with our thanks. Just uh, one clarification. I know the um, request is to um, approve the resignation effective retroactively. Um, I think it's incumbent upon the board to just accept the resignation as of the date that uh, we receive it. I did ask the town clerk to work with um, both parties, and since Sean is here, he can pass it along. Uh, we, we find that we often have a hard time 
of either getting a resignation or if folks don't know they need to submit a letter for resignation. And just, um, we're really grateful to have all these wonderful volunteers, but we do need to make sure that when folks no longer attend, they send us the letter as quickly as possible. Even though we know um, someone has resigned, can't act on it until we get a formal letter. So um, either someone doesn't know they need to submit a letter or sometimes someone moves and, and uh, the parties can't submit it in their uh, stead. So we're going to work with both parties to uh, make sure that when we appoint folks um, that we also explain the obligation is that if they choose not to serve that we need those formal letters because we need to fill those positions as quickly as possible in order to make sure we have quorums and um, action. So. Um, if, the whole purpose of that discussion is just accept the resignation with our thanks, and then um, we'll work with both uh, parties and the unaffiliated appointments so when people go on, they know they need to um, send a formal letter to come off. Absolutely. So if we could have a motion to accept. I'll, I'll make that. Motion. I think Shannon moved it. Second. More second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Our next item is to accept the minutes of the regular meeting September 9th. Any corrections, changes? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, next item is to approve the special meeting minutes of October 3rd. Move it up. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm abstaining And there. one abstention. Any reports? Um, just a question. I, I know it was, it was brought up before, um, and we already approved the easement, but um, for the big Y. Oh, yes. Um, and I, I, I wish the town attorney was still here. It, we're 100% we're sure that we need the the lessee's permission yeah, for so, that to happen. Yeah, just um, on other, under reports, I'll just update the board. Um, so the town is, uh, as, as of August, approved all necessary action to allow Big Y to go forward. They mm -hmm. can begin construction tomorrow. Um, our understanding is from our town attorney, but also from their big wise town attorney, that they, because the town leases the land to the skating center, they also need the skating center approval. I think there was mention earlier this evening that there are, is another party involved, um, Mr. Gersten, and that is absolutely not true. There's no one involved. Um, the only parties involved in this transaction that the town is involved in is Mr. Wagner yeah. and the skating center. That's the way so, I was understood um, it. Yep. Just for the record, well. just so that the public knows there's no conflict huh? um, or no failure to disclose um, other additional parties. Um, we have met the town attorney, and um, myself and town staff has met with uh, Mr. Wagner, the owner of the property, and he has represented that any outstanding issues are private issues that resolve need to be resolved between Big Y and the Skating Center. Uh, last Friday, the town attorney, um, town staff, and myself also met with uh, the Skating Center privately to assist in any um, help we could uh, give um, to facilitate the conversations, even though the town's not a party. Um, and I can't remember if it was today or yesterday. <laughs> Is it yesterday? It's all melding They're together. All together. <laughs> together. Um, there was a few as well. Today, um, the town met with um, the uh, big Y. Okay. So since Friday, uh, we've met with the owner of the property, which is Mr. Wagner solely. We've met with um, the skating center and their attorneys, and we've met with um, big Y and their attorneys. Um, big Y is... Um, going back and um, trying to resolve the easement privately or they'll come back with a, um, a substitute uh, plan. Okay. So um, things are moving and we'll see a resolution shortly. I know everyone wants to build um, as far as the town's concerned. You know, our hands are tied um, unless something comes back before the town, which um, it could be because the town in our discussions with Big Y today um, did assist in alternative plans should the land use commissions um, approve those so I think um, I appreciate the Board of Selectmen's concern about being helpful and assisting in private negotiations uh, Mr. Wagner does not want us negotiating his contract um, with his private uh, parties and we respect that Fair enough. Um, but we are available to assist and um, as I said uh, meetings with uh, the owner uh, the skating center and as of today big Y all of the parties um, have what they need to uh, make a decision and my only follow-up with that is, with respect to leases, is there anything we can do in the future? As I don't know if this will ever happen again, but to 
construct the lease as such where so, we have the say because we own the land? Uh, actually, we don't own the land. I'm old enough to have remembered when the lease was signed. And um, the land actually was owned by Mr. That's Wagner. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And Mr. Wagner Sr., uh, who's passed, is, gave the town the land That's with right. the easement on it. So it wasn't the town okay. giving the easement. It was the town receiving the easement. Okay. Um, in retrospect, yes, if the um, owner of the property had retained the rights to the road exclusively or retain the rights to the easement, uh, we, we wouldn't um, need the skating center's approval, but right. that did not happen. Okay. Um, the town is not saying that the skating center needs to um, be a party to the easement. That's our p opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, so the sk skating center can move forward without that. Um, I think they want to minimize litigation. And so we can certainly understand that. But yep. um, as far as the town's concerned, as of the action that this board took in August, we are ready to go. They can put a shovel in the ground. Uh, we confirmed that today with Big Y. The town has um, no other obstacles or barriers in the way to construction. It's our opinion. They're ready to, that they can begin construction tomorrow. We would issue a building permit tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, we are trying to be helpful uh, because we are aware that there are um, ongoing negotiations uh, Let's remember that the town asked that the road be, uh, be put where the easement is. Mm -hmm. It is in the town's best interest, and the Zoning Commission held a public hearing and voted that same night because that is the uh, preferred traffic plan for the town of Simsbury. Um, whether We can't make someone give someone an easement, and if that's the case, then um, Big Y has an option to come back to the town land use boards and, um, for a different traffic pattern. So we may see that. Okay. Or they may resolve the easement. But um, so. construction is ready to begin as far as the town's concerned. And I can be assured the town has used all the resources available to us. Um, our town attorney has been great about meeting with staff, uh, meeting with big wise attorneys, you know, three meetings in three days. I think that's really all the town can do. We actually pulled together the first meeting between Big Y and uh, the skating center when it seemed that wasn't happening by itself. We really tried to make sure this process keeps moving. But thank you for asking for the update. I appreciate that. Um, any other reports? Just have one update. Um, I just wanted to announce that on October 24th, we are doing our first Senior Citizens Night of the Year. This is now in our fourth year. Um, and it will be an early bird dinner at 4 o'clock, followed by a volleyball, girls' volleyball game at 5. Perfect. Thank you. And if much. you want to sign up, you should call the Senior Center. Thank you. Uh, yes. I just, um, <clears throat> and I know it's late, so I'll make it as brief as I can, but I attended last night, and I know, Mary, you were there for the beginning of the um, the informed and conscious conversation on matters of race at the Free Library, and it was just a very, very interesting um, evening. And um, Pam McDonald and um, Sarah Bachelor, I just wanted to thank them, along with Pat Johnson, who was there as the facilitator of the discussion. Um, and it was... Um, as I said, very interesting. They had us evaluate as you would um, placing, picking somebody to be in a special gifted program, a gifted and talented program, and we had to evaluate um, folks based on a lot of criteria. And um, in the end, we found out who those people actually were, and they were Albert Einstein, and uh, uh, yeah, so it was very interesting. People that you really thought might not be qualified to do something in the end of their life gave a great deal to society. So um, I think the overall message, and hopefully they'll have more of these sessions in town, was really that um, you know we ca categorize people not only by race but by a lot of different other things. And I think a, a conscious awareness of that and what we can do individually as people um, can make a large impact. So I just want to thank and Rick Wagner too, who um, through the Martin Luther King Committee put that together. It was great. Thank you. Um, with no further business before the board, why don't we have a motion to adjourn? Move that. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you can keep this. Can I keep that? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, I think I have a copy or two.